Hello and welcome back to the ECG course. This is chapter 11 on AV blocks, atrioventricular blocks. And the first thing I want to mention is that AV blocks themselves are not a type of rhythm or arrhythmia. They are simply a interruption in the conduction. Okay, so your underlying rhythm could be sinus tachycardia with a first degree AV block. Okay, so it, it, your underlying rhythm will still occur, but there's some sort of interruption in that rhythm. And I'll kind of explain what I mean here. AV stands for atrioventricular. So there's a block in the conduction between the atria and the ventricles. And typically, we, when we're talking about AV blocks, the, the AV block will occur around the AV node, just like a junctional rhythm, uh, the pacemaker is around the AV node or the AV junction. With an AV block, you, you will have a block in this conduction pathway between the atria and ventricles in that same area. But you could still have a sinus rhythm beating, you know, depolarizing here from this sinoatrial node, and it's just getting delayed once it makes it to that block, okay? There's just a delay right here somewhere that's slowing things down or causing an interruption in that conduction. So here's the first example, the first degree AV block. And this one's the easiest one to remember. It's the same uh, uh, as a sinus rhythm. It, you just have a prolonged PR interval, a prolonged PR interval. That is the only difference. So you'll, your underlying rate will be whatever your rhythm's rate is. So if this was a normal sinus, okay, we'd say this is a normal sinus with a first degree AV block. Your P waves are present. There's no dropped beats. You have a one-to-one -one ratio. You have one P wave for every QRS complex. The only difference is this PR interval is long. Okay, notice that that PR interval is greater than one big box in length. So it's greater than 200 milliseconds or 0 0.20 seconds. The QRS is still uh, should be narrow. Now we're going to get into the tough ones, all right? The, first, the, uh, the next type of AV block is a second degree type 1. It's also called Mobitz 1 or sometimes Winkiebach phenomenon. Winkiebach phenomenon. Okay, your second degree type blocks, you, you have two second degree AV blocks. You have second degree type 1 and second degree type 2. Second degree type 1 is also known as Mobitz 1. And second degree type 2 might also be called Mobitz 2. So if anybody says it's a Mobitz, they're saying it's a second degree AV block. So again, you're going to identify the underlying rate. Okay, uh, The uh, rhythm should be regularly irregular. It's going to have some sort of pattern. Now these uh, Winkiebach or Mobitz 1 type rhythms are typically transient. They don't last a whole long. So uh, for a long time. They're either going to go away and your underlying rhythm is going to return or they're going to progress into a worsened AV block. So it's a transient rhythm. It doesn't really last very long usually. Your P wave is present. Your PQRS ratio is variable. I believe this is the first time we've seen that and what I want you to note is that you have P waves that don't conduct QRS complexes. We have a dropped beat here. All right, you have a P wave, but there's no QRS complex. Now, all the other ones we talked about before that had dropped QRS complexes, such as a sinus arrest or a sinus block, those didn't have P waves present. They had a flat line there, that isoelectric line. Here we have a P wave present, so that's what makes this different. There's some sort of block between the atria and the ventricles where the atria depolarized, but the ventricles did not follow. Okay, and then the pattern that makes this a second degree type one is what we call going, going, gone. And what I want you to recognize is that the PR interval gets longer from one beat to the next. Look how much longer that PR interval got. So we went going, going, gone. No QRS complex here. All right, and this could go, this could be going, 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 gone. It could be over three or four beats before you have a dropped beat, uh, but that's typically the pattern and the way that we would remember it. The QRS width should be narrow, should be uh, less than three small boxes wide. 
Let's take a look at the next type of AV block. This is a second degree type 2 or a Mobitz 2. Okay, a Mobitz 2 AV block. It's uh, the next one down the line. Again, you're going to identify the underlying rate. Your rhythm could be regularly irregular or it could be regular depending on your uh, ratio of blocked beats. Your PR interval all right, should stay consistent. It should be normal. And here's what I mean. You have this PR interval here. should be the same as this PR interval here, which should be the same as this one over here and this one over here. Notice you do have dropped beats, okay? So this P wave occurred right where it should have, but the QRS complex is missing. Now the difference here between uh, Mobitz 1 and Mobitz 2, this is Mobitz 2, is remember that the Mobitz 1 had the going, going, gone pattern where the PR interval prolonged. Let's take another look. Notice how this PR interval is getting longer before the drop beat. And with Mobitz 2, your PR interval stays the same where it exists. So everywhere you have a PR interval, it's going to stay consistent. Moving on to the worst type of AV block, third degree AV block. Now these can be narrow or wide. So uh, remember we talked about ventricular rhythms and how they're wide in nature. Well, a third degree AV block very similarly may be wide, and we're going to show some examples of those later on. The atrial and the ventricular rate will both be different, and here's what I mean. If we look down here, we see there are P waves here. We have many more P waves than QRS complexes. Many more P waves than QRS complexes. That means the atria are depolarizing at a faster rate than the QRS complexes. And then if you look at the P waves, your P to P interval, let's find two P waves we can see clearly. All right, and put that right on the top of them. Your P to P interval should stay consistent. So you'll find hidden P waves. All right, you're gonna find hidden P waves within the T waves and the QRS complexes. There's no marriage between the P waves and the QRS complexes, so they don't care about each other. All right, they're not, the, the atria are not conducting, or the conduction is not uh, traveling from the atria down to the ventricles without, there's a complete block there, all right? So sometimes third degree AV block is called a complete heart block. Both the rhythms will be regular. Your atrial rhythm will be regular and your ventricular rhythm will be regular, okay? But they are not associated with one another. Even if you see a P wave before the QRS complex, you'll notice that it's just continuing throughout its pattern. That just happens to be a coincidence that it fell right before it. The PR interval, there is none. There's no pattern to the PR interval. All right, so here's the easy way to remember these or to be able to identify them. And this doesn't fit all of them. There are what we call non-typable AV blocks, but you'll know that that's a non-typable AV block because it doesn't fit in this little pattern here. So you're going to present yourself with an EKG strip and you're going to say, all right, it looks like I have some kind of heart block here. There's something going on with the PR interval. First question you're going to ask, is the PR interval a constant length? If yes, you come over here. Do I have a dropped QRS complex? If you don't have a dropped QRS complex, it's probably a first degree AV block. If you do have a dropped QRS complex, it's a Mobitz 2, a second degree type 2. Coming back to the top, we're going to ask again, is the PR interval a constant length? If it's not a constant length, we're going to say, do we have a P wave for every QRS complex? If you do, it's a Mobitz 1, a second degree type 1. If you don't, it's a third degree AV block. A third degree AV block, because remember, even though we have drop beats with the Mobitz 1, we still have a P wave for every QRS complex that exists. I uh, would ask you to write this down or draw it on a piece of paper uh, and try to use it as you look at different types of AV blocks. All right, here's our first example. Again, this is a first degree AV block. Let's go through our, our list though. The first question we have, is the PR interval a constant length? And if you look at this, you will see that the PR interval is staying consistent throughout. There's already lines there to show us, but you have an consistent PR interval. The second question we have, since yes, uh, do we have dropped beats? Do we have dropped QRS complexes? And if you look at this, there's no P waves that, 
that don't have a QRS complex. Okay, so we can come back here and we could say no, we don't have any drop beats. So we have a first degree AV block. First degree AV block. Let's look at another one. Again, we have a uh, PR interval of a constant length. There are no dropped beats. However, we have an extra beat. Okay, and I will tell you that this extra beat has nothing to do with the underlying rhythm. This is a normal sinus rhythm because it's of normal rate with a first degree AV block, first degree heart block. This is ectopy. That is ectopy, and we're going to go over that in a future chapter. Here's another example. Now, now let's ask the first question. Is our PR interval a constant length? Well, if we look at this, and we said that this was a PR interval, you can see that that is definitely not the same as the next one. So no, it is not a constant length. And then if we go back to that chart again, if our PR interval isn't a constant length, well, we have to ask, do I have a P wave for every QRS complex? If I do, it will be a Mobitz 1. If I don't, it'll be a third degree. So let's go back and take a look. And while there is a P wave in front of this QRS complex, there's a P wave in front of this QRS complex, and there's a P wave in front of this QRS complex, that just happens to be coincidence. They are not the same, okay? Uh, those P waves are not causing those QRS complexes. In fact, if you took this P to P interval and then you took exactly half of that, you will see you have buried P waves in the T waves. And what's happened is what we call complete AV dissociation. In fact, this is where you would find your P to P interval. Use that P to P interval to identify where the hidden P waves are. So there's one in there. And if you go this way, there's one in there. So we have what we call complete AV dissociation. So this is a third degree heart block. Remember I said that those can be wide. Those QRS complexes are wide. That can happen and that happens because this underlying rhythm is a ventricular escape. Just look at it. It's got a rate of one, two, three, 40 beats per minute. It's wide, it's a ventricular escape rhythm and you have a third degree heart block there. Let's take a look at this one. First question, is our PR interval consistent? And where we have a PR interval, yes, it's consistent. We have a consistent PR interval for these three beats here, and it's the same as this one over here. And our next question would be, do we have drop beats? And yes, we do have drop beats. You can see clearly here, we have a P wave without a QRS complex and a P wave without a QRS complex here. So this is a Mobitz 1, a second, I'm sorry, a Mobitz 2, a second degree type 2 AV block, second degree type 2, Mobitz 2. Looking at the next one, okay, first question again, is our PR interval a constant length? So let's take a look here. That's our PR interval there. Looks like it probably is pretty consistent. And now we have a question, do we have dropped beats? And looking at this, I don't see any dropped beats. And I'm not going to assume that there are any drop beats because our PR interval is staying pretty consistent. So this would be a sinus bradycardia with a first degree AV block. And that is a very prolonged PR interval. All right, here's our next one. First question, is our PR interval a constant length? And you can see clearly it is not a constant length. It is changing. That PR interval, that PR interval, it's not constant. And then the next question, do we have drop beats? Do I, or do I have a uh, drop beat here? Yes. Let's go back to our algorithm. It's been a while since we've looked at it. So we said our PR interval is not a constant length. And then we're going to ask if we have a P wave for every QRS complex. If you have a P wave for every QRS complex, it's a Mobitz 1. If you do not, it's a third degree AV block. So let's go back to that one we were looking at. It's been so long since I looked at the algorithm after going through all these that I forgot what happens when you have a change in PR interval. All right, so here's that one we were talking about again. 
do we have a p-wave for every QRS complex? So yes, for every QRS complex that's up there, we do have a p-wave in front of it. And also, I want you to identify that this is that regularly irregular pattern where we have three beats and then we have a drop beat. And then you'll see that that happens again if, the, if you printed this out for a longer strip. And you'd also identify this going, 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 gone. Going, 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 and it would be gone again. So this is Winkybach, second degree type one or Mobitz one. All of those mean the same thing. It's a second degree AB block type one. Type one. Moving on. Oops, skipped one. All right, first question, is our PR interval a constant length? And I think you'll see that it is a constant length where we have one. Second question, do we have drop beats? And yes, we have drop beats. You have P wave here with no QRS, P wave here, P wave here. This is a second degree type two, Mobitz two, second degree type two. All right, let's ask those questions again. Is our PR interval a constant length? You can see clearly that this is way longer than this. We're not even going to go any further than that. And then we're gonna say, do, does, uh, do we have a P wave for every QRS? And these are not associated. These are not associated. You can clearly see that the P to P's are just marching out. If you just go from there to there, the P to P's are marching out. There's a hidden one in there. You see it at the bottom of the S wave there. And your QRS complexes will stay regular. Your R to R interval. This will stay regular. So this is a third degree AV block because you have complete AV dissociation. Your P to P's will be the same. Your R to R will be the same, but they are not associated with each other. Now, if you looked at this previous one, here, if you look at this previous one, notice that your P to P's, okay, and your PR intervals will prolong, your P to P's still stay the same. For it to be a P wave, that always remains true. Okay, your P's will always march out. But notice how your R to R's change. You got this, and then you have no R wave there because that dropped beat. That's a clear way to tell the difference between a complete heart block and anything else. All right, looking at the next one. All right, first question, does our PR interval stay a constant length? And it does not. You can clearly see that that PR interval and that one, and then we don't even see one here. All right, and if we want to try to identify that hidden P wave, because I bet you're guessing that there's a hidden P wave over there, Let's do this P to P, and sure enough, there is a hidden P wave in that T wave. Remember, T waves are never notched for anything other than the fact that there's a hidden P wave in there. You also had a hit, have a hidden P wave over here. So we, we ask the question, is our PR interval a constant length? It is not. And then you're going to say, well, do I have a P wave for every QRS? And you do have a P wave for every QRS. All right, you also notice you have that going, going, gone pattern. Going, going, gone pattern. This is a Winky Bach, a second degree type one. AB block type one, also known as Mobitz. Mobitz one. All right, let's look at another one. It's important to look at a lot of examples of these because they're more difficult than uh, pretty much any other arrhythmia. All right. First question again, is our PR interval staying the same? All right, PR interval there, there, and there. I would say yes, that's staying pretty consistent. The second question is, do we have drop beats? And yes, you do. Those are P waves there. All right, and you have obvious drop beats. Again, if you wanna find the hidden P waves, find the two closest P waves that you can see, and then you just march those out. You march those out and you can find the hidden ones in there. It's important to do. So we would call this a th uh, second degree type two AV block, second degree type two AV block, and it's got a three to one ratio, three P waves for every QRS complex. So it's also called a three to one AV block. 
So again, just want to review this. When you get over to this side here, as you can see, there's a little bit, you know, a little bit more you got to look for. You got to look for that going, going, gone pattern and look for the R to R regularity. If your R to R regularity is not staying consistent, it's going to be this one because the third degree AV block is typically very regular. Okay, that's it for uh, this chapter. And again, I don't want you to think that that's everything there is to know about AV blocks. There's a lot more to know, and we're going to discuss that later. That's just an introduction to AV blocks. If you want to go back and you want to look over uh, ventricular rhythms in Chapter 10, click on the left image there. If you're ready to move on and learn about ectopy and aberrancy, click Chapter 12 on the right there. And as always, don't forget, subscribe to the channel.